Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and introduce you guys to my Path of Exile 3.22 Righteous Fire Inquisitor Guide. So this go around we'll be playing Inquisitor instead of Juggernaut. Have no fear, Juggernaut is still fantastic, although I won't be updating, or I will be, there's not really much to update. I won't really be making a new video, but the POBs will all be updated. So before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about the Inquisitor leveling. If you guys are familiar with the Righteous Fire Jug leveling, the Inquisitor is very similar. Um, the main difference is you have a lot more damage throughout the campaign, specifically like Act 1 uh, and Act 2. Um, <clears throat> Inquisitor does get a little bit of a weak part, but that's between like 40 and 55, and we'll talk about that in about 14 seconds. All right, so a lot of people are going to ask about pros and cons between the two. Um, so I've got a little bit of a list here, and of course, don't forget... If you are ever stuck, confused, or just want to know, over here on my website, pox.net, you can actually just utilize the FAQ to your advantage. So click on the FAQ, for example, uh, type in Inquisitor in the search bar, click the question, and we'll bam. I'll leave that for you guys, though. Okay, so over here, um, just talk about some quick pros and cons between Juggernaut and Inquisitor, for, just to flesh it out. Uh, Inquisitor's got faster leveling through the campaign. Juggernaut's pretty slow in Act 1. That's because we get a bunch of damage as uh, Templar right away. Uh, it might feel a bit squishy from 40 to 55, but that's just because our big spike of sustain comes from Cruel Lab, whereas Juggernaut, it's normal lab. <clears throat> it's much easier on the colors, especially for newer players, uh, because of the um, Inquisitor is armor ES, so that's kind of like blue and red, and we're like a tanky caster, right? So that fits us really well. Juggernaut is more like pure red. Um, cons, you need to press a button every four seconds. It's not really a super big deal as long as you are actively pressing buttons. Uh, it's not like you have to actually stop. You just have to perform an action. Even shield charge would work, for example. But if you're the type of guy who just holds down left click all the time, Juggernaut might be the answer for you. Um, <clears throat> you've got more initial damage than Juggernaut because the Ascendancy naturally gives you a lot of damage in two forms of multipliers. Monsters take increased elemental damage, and monsters who are on top of your Consecrated Ground take a, essentially more damage from all sources. This can actually be much more beneficial for people who are always stuck in the very low, like, uh, I don't know, really know how to say it, like, say you're level, like, 80 or something, your character will noticeably have a lot more damage than a Juggernaut because by the time you're level 80, you don't really have a lot of gear, especially if it's League Start. So this is where this really makes the, the biggest uh, appearance, I guess you could say. Um, however, you do have a harder time breaking into red maps on the defensive side of things if you're the type of player who just wants to go face first and everything and not think. Um, we do have a bit more of a transition Juggernaut doesn't really have that. You kind of just stack armor the whole time, and then you have to build for damage. Inquisitor is kind of the opposite. It gets a lot more damage, and we have to build offensively. Okay, so now that we're done with that, let's talk about what this character, you know, what you can kind of expect. So you can absolutely get all four of your Void Stones, not a problem. Uh, easy damage over uh, damage over time playstyle. As you saw kind of here, you just kind of run through the monsters and watch them burn. Uh, over a 1.5k net recovery, which means we get to drop all of our life flasks in favor of utility, so you don't have to mash your buttons. Also, these flasks will be automated later. 80% plus max res, 30k plus armor, block and spell block cap, along with recovery. This makes you close to immortal when mapping if set up correctly and doesn't have to cost a lot of money if you know how to build it. Uh, you get a mixture of life and ES, which to me adds uniqueness to the character. I love playing Path of Exile with all of the different things you can do in it compared to other games, so having that extra buffer of energy shield is definitely a plus for me. And then you get 50% innate curse resistance, which is granted via the Consecrated Ground, which makes mapping a smoother experience. Some of the cons, you have limited damage scaling. You can expect the average player to hit around 2 to 2.5 million DPS following this POB. The POB does go up to 6.5 million, and with very, very heavy investment, you can expect over 10 million, but I don't really participate in it that far. Um... One of the other things is you are kind of melee on a lot of targets, especially if you want to make use of your Consecrated Ground. Um, you do have to be very close to the target and kind of keep the Consecrated Ground underneath them. But as long as you're following the POB and gearing yourself correctly, this should not really be a problem. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and open the Path of Building. So now to open the Path of Building, here's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to go over to Pox.net, which is located right over here in front of your guys' face, right? We're going to click the RF Inquisitor League Starter, so just click that button. From there, we're going to open up Path of Building, and we're going to hit New, Import, 
and paste it. Now, once you paste this, and also before we continue, uh, there's also a RF Inquisitor walkthrough throughout the entire campaign. That's actually what's playing in the background right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel out of that. We don't need it anymore. So if you wanna follow that, you can find that located right here. We've also got <clears throat> a loot filter built in that you can follow as well. And if you prefer the more written version, I've got the Inquisitor guide written on PoE Vault along with the Juggernaut version. We'll be updating these in just a few days. Okay, so with that being said, let's close out of this and open up the POB. The POB pretty much handholds you all the way from level one to end game. Uh, all you have to do is make sure you're matching the correct item sets. So for example, here at level one to 12, you wanna make sure your skills are on one to 12 and your tree is on one to 12 as well. If you go ahead and take some time to look at some of the items, I have added some text onto majority of the items, I would say to help players out with the early game, make sure that you understand what you're looking for, make sure you understand like what stats actually mean, right? So definitely for people who wanna take it a little bit slower or just wanna learn more about the game, this is here for you. So we already kind of saw what it's like to be level one through 12, right? Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like to be higher level. So that footage in the background you saw was during the leveling phase. So I think that's actually more like the 12 to 30. Let's talk about 55 to 70 when you finish the campaign. So over here at 55 to 70, one thing I will note is for players who are following that leveling video, there's a slight change I have made. Instead of coming down to Champion of the Cause for your skitter bots, we won't be doing that anymore. We're just gonna come up towards Breath of Flame, so very minor change. That's just to prevent a lot of respecking. So over here, let's go ahead and talk about the build. <clears throat> I've got an Opal Scepter of Burning. My loot filter highlights pretty much all blue scepters. I just picked this up off the floor, identified burn damage and crafted fire damage. You're good to go for quite a while. I've got a plus one fire spirit shield. For players who want to be more tanky, consider using an armor base shield. I've got just a standard armor ES helmet, nothing crazy here, kind of going down the list. Very basic gear, nothing that crazy. This amulet has damage over time multiplier. Two of the big stats on amulet for damage would be plus one fire spell skills, plus one all spell skills, but that's very rare in 75, item level 75 plus, and damage over time multiplier. Okay, so with that being said, you can kind of see the tree here. I'm gonna go ahead and log into that character. So this is the character who was in that video that you saw. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right on into a quick map. This character is running really bad beer gear, like worse than the POB, far worse than the POB. Uh, so it should be fun to see what happens here. This character is running on a four link. So we've got Righteous Fire, Elemental Focus, Increased Area of Effect, Burning Damage, and my single target is Fire Trap with Life Tap, Burning, Combustion, and Fire Trap. This is, this should be Trap and Mind Damage, not Burning Damage. Okay, one other thing to note is that this map's gonna be really rough. Um, this is on like a fully fleshed out Atlas, so we've got Grand Design on, so we're running 50% pack size on this map. This character is not really ready for that type of content, so we're gonna just sorta zoom our way through here. So your standard play style is gonna be, for me, shield charging. When you find a big pack, hit your infernal cry and the pack blows up kind of like that. Let's go ahead and put that button right, where is it? There it is. I don't like it on spacebar. All right, yeah. Uh, when you encounter a pack of blue monsters, what I like to do is use my flammability curse on them before I throw a fire trap. Uh, so here's a big pack, flammability, press my infernal cry and kaboom. That way it doesn't feel like you're constantly throwing the sluggish fire trap. I try to really keep the fire trap more for a single target. RF along with just flammability is honestly enough to clear most of the mobs throughout like your journey playing Path of Exile. So here's a rare, I'll throw a fire trap at him. You can see the extra damage. Now as for your movement skills, I prefer shield charge, but there's nothing wrong with replacing that with say leap slam, lightning warp you know there's a lot of different things that people like to use for your boss throw your fire traps curse them up cover them in ash you can use your frost bling to dodge out of the way as well okay that character is pretty much done you'll notice that even this character standing still here is rocking 600 life regen and a little bit of es regen maybe like a hundred uh because the rf also sustains on the energy shield thanks to our beautiful ascendancy highest path okay I'm gonna go ahead and jump off that character and go a little further into the POB. So now I'm gonna go ahead and jump kind of to end game here. So over here, we've got <clears throat> 70 to 85. 
70 to 85 and 70 to 85. Now, when you're in this section here, this POB is rocking about 1.5 million DPS. Oops, didn't even, I forgot to switch it there. Sorry about that. This is rocking about 1.5 million POB DPS. All I did is just flip these to 70 to 85 here. Now, this character's gear is pretty good. Um, one thing to note is that a lot of people are going to be rushing their void stones. You can do void stones with half of this damage. It's not really a problem. You just have to understand how to do them, right? One of the other big things would be getting your single target online. So your single target comes from Essence of Horror on Elder Helmets. However, there's a little bit of info to add here. So number one, with Elder Helmets being more rare in the patch now, there's nothing wrong with getting a singular Essence of Horror, buying it off someone in trade, slapping it on a helmet that's armor base and using it. That still gives you 30% more elemental damage, which is goes from a four link to a five link. And if you've done Betrayal League Mechanic and you have plus one gems open, then just for a few more chaos, you can craft plus one area gems and get another plus one on your fire trap. This early damage really helps you progress. And if you're in Trade League, these are available to you. You don't have to start sinking a whole bunch of currency into your Elder Helmets for progression. I would say the Elder Helmet progression is more for getting Maven and Uber Elder out of the way. Like I said before, most of these uh, items have a bunch of text on them, so you can kind of see. Another thing is don't spend a crazy amount of money on items with chaos resistance early on. It's okay if your character's at, say, like 20% chaos resistance. I would even say that's totally fine. I like to go a little above and beyond because I hate chaos damage. One of the cool things that we get on Inquisitor is this mastery on armor ES. 10% of armor also applies to chaos damage taken from hits. This will help save your life against chaos damage, especially when your uh, chaos res is very low. Okay, so now what I want to go ahead and do is kind of jump into a much more endgame character to kind of show you what endgame Righteous Fire will be like. So what I've actually done this go around is I have my SSF endgame character here, and I will be honest, it's a little bit unethical, uh, but not all of my gear, just some of my gear is unethical. So for example, I have a kind of crazy dagger that I will actually be posting how to craft for people who want to go far past league start. I've got an Ashes of the Stars, although I'm not really doing it justice. You could just simply anoint um, <clears throat> Charisma and it would be very identical to like a plus one fire amulet at that case. But let's not talk about the gear too much. I want to go ahead and just show you what it looks like. So here is my 99 character. One of the big things to take away is this character does not have an Aegis Aurora or a Melding of the Flesh as I do not have access to it in SSF. So I'm going to show you that even though you don't have those, the defenses of this character are still very solid. And the reason I bring this up is because this allows me to talk about an alternate way to acquire survivability that's not locked behind Aegis Aurora because I know a lot of people on League Start will not be able to afford them. So you can see that with this character, I've killed Maven, I have my Legacy of Fury. This character is more focused on map clear rather than bossing, so I'm kind of just going to zip around through the map. You can see even here in the high tier content, just one simple flammability and shield charging the mobs over, they die. I'm not looking at this, so I really hope no divine ones pop up. <laughs> okay, here's the boss arena. I'm going to drop a portal to just wipe off all of my uh, shrine buffs, and let's go fight the boss. Now, I'm going to try to intentionally face tank some stuff you shouldn't with our friend Frost Shield. So here's Phoenix's big kaboom. Tanked it up with Frost Shield. Beautiful. And down goes the boss. Okay, so this variant that I'm going to go ahead and talk about a little bit is primarily, again, due to the fact that I'm sure Aegis Aurora prices are going to skyrocket like crazy. And uh, yeah, let's talk about that. 
So for players who are trying to break into the next gear bracket, so say you're in the 85 to 90 range and you're trying to get to the 90 range, but you just cannot afford that Aegis Aurora. I'm going to help you out here. So if you look at this character right here, one of the main things to understand is an interaction that I'm using. It's an interaction that I used to use in previous versions, but took away, and now I'm going to bring back, just primarily because of Aegis prices. Corrupted Soul is your answer. You'll notice that this character actually has a whole bunch of energy shield, right? The purpose of having all of this energy shield is that, it number one, it protects us, so it's a buffer. Number two, Corrupted Soul splits it, so instead of ES protecting our life pool, it only protects against 50% of the damage. So half of that damage shoots through the energy shield pool and hits our life pool. Now, why is that a good thing? That's a good thing because if you're already in the block version, which is right here, right? Then you'll notice if I click it, I have a shield that recovers life on block. So that way, instead of your energy shield getting deleted and then your life is bouncing up and down, this kind of evens it out. So your ES is not taking nearly as much damage and your life is still still staying pretty high because you're splitting the damage. This is a very good in-between way, and there are two ways to achieve it. So number one, you can go with the Glorious Vanity to acquire Corrupted Soul here. Number two, you can do Heist and or purchase it off Heister's uh, Replica Soul Tether, which is located right here. One huge thing to understand with Replica Soul Tether is a lot of people in my guide were getting scammed because people would put a Replica Soul Tether up, cancel the trade, then put a regular one up, which is like one alchemy orb, and this was basically like 10 divine orbs. Be very careful on trading for a Replica Soul Tether, and if Replica Soul Tether is equal to the price of Aegis Aurora, do not go for it. Just go for the Aegis Aurora variant. Anyway, I think that's pretty much about it. Um, one other thing to kind of... Uh, bring a little bit of attention to is checking out the notes here. I've tried to explain a little breakdown act by act on what auras you should be running. And make sure to read this if you're the type of player who runs purity of elements and then drops it because your resistance capped. Do not do that. You want to make sure you maintain your ailment immunity and you can kind of see that right here. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys have a fun adventure playing the Righteous Fire Inquisitor. I know I will. Uh, I'll be more than happy to help you guys out on any questions. And I may or may not create kind of like a part two to this build guide, specifically focusing on where I believe players get stuck, which is the 85 to 90 range. It'll basically be a video just fleshing out exactly how you're supposed to set this up so you don't have a messed up character. Anyway, though, like I said, Thanks everyone so much for watching. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. Although for this Sunday, we will be streaming for the PoE release. Take care, everybody.